What's up guys, today I'm working on the most important car I've ever worked on in my entire life and that of course is my wife's car, 2009 Subaru Outback. Now my wife and I went away and you can see the car is pretty dirty and it's been burned, bird bombed everywhere. Uh, we went hiking and rock climbing and do all those outdoors uh, you know, kind of activities that we do and it's really, really filthy. So today we're going to talk about the step-by-step -step chronological order of how to properly wash your car. Now I've done a few videos piecemealed here and there, but I'm going to go through all the steps. We're going to talk about all the tools. So this might be a little bit of a longer video. So what I'm going to do is right here, you'll see a little number hopefully appearing and I'm going to number each one. So if there's something you need to skip, just skip ahead from three to five or whatever. So you can do that. A little caveat I also want to tell you, we are not talking about compounding and we're not talking about polishing. We're not detailing the car. We're doing a very proper wash on a very dirty car. So your car may not be dirty. I would probably guess that it's not as dirty as this. So you may have to skip a few steps, but I want to show you the full smorgasbord of things to do and you can pick and choose the one that works for you. So that and a lot more coming up on this episode of Ride Along. Step one is by far the most overlooked of the wash process, yet it's the easiest. Walk around the car and assess the level of dirt. Is there any tar anywhere? A new rock chip or maybe a new door ding you didn't see? Spend one minute looking at the car to help you form a proper game plan. All right, so you've walked around your car and you've taken a quick look and you've assessed what's going on. Now, the reason I make a lot of people or encourage people to do that is to look down at the bottom here. Sometimes you'll find some tar or some foreign thing that you don't want to wash with your wash mitt because then it gets in there and it just gets all gummed up and it's not good. So just take 20 seconds, walk around and be like, okay, everything looks normal, dirty, and you're good to go. Grab a lot of the tools. Now I want to describe to you the, the basic tools for a, uh, for a wash, and we'll get into more complicated things going along. All right, so we have our three bucket method, right? First bucket here is our wash mitt, and I'll show you inside here, just like every bucket, there's grit guards. In fact, I put two grit guards uh, all the way in so that they sit on top of each other. So instead of just one mitt, and the bottom's down here, I put two. So it actually gives you that much more space to uh, kind of keep all the gunk on the bottom. It's, it's, you know, and these things are super cheap. So, uh, so I have grit guards on the bottom of all these. This one here is gonna be designated soap. So this is your foam, uh, uh, your foam paint cleanser. And then uh, in this one over here, it's just gonna be clear, clean water to dunk the wash mitt, right? Everybody sort of gets that. On this side, I have a designated bucket for the wheels. You never mix the two of these. These two to go together, and this is the wheel bucket. The wheel bucket, remember all this gunk that's on here, that, there's little uh, you know, things that are very, very sharp, little pieces of metal, and you don't want to get that on your paint because for obvious reasons, you're going to scratch. Now in here, for the wheels, I have mud tire shine, that's for later, but you're going to use Brute wheel soap. So there's a difference between the foam, which is soap for the paint, and Brute, which is soap for the wheels. Very important. This is much stronger to get in there. Then you're going to use Plum, and you're going to spray it on there. We'll talk about that in a minute, and mud afterwards for the tires. Inside the, inside the uh, wheel bucket, we have a wheel woolly, a medium wheel woolly. We have a small little tiny wheel woolly, and more importantly, uh, the lug nut brush. All these things you can find links to uh, on my website. Uh, I have a little wash mitt as well, and of course a grit guard on the bottom. So these, oh, what we got over here? We have a foam gun. We're gonna use that in a, in a few minutes. Again, link on the website. You need uh, microfiber towels as well, and I'm assuming a vacuum. Again, we'll go into these a little bit more, but I wanted to give you just a little bit of heads up because I'm gonna start speeding up now. All right, next step, engine. For step two, open the hood and assess the level of dirt. Does it need a simple wipe down or full degreasing? In my case, it clearly needs an all-purpose cleaner. Be sure the engine is cool to warm, but not hot. Next, remove any big leaves or sticks caught in the hood jams. And be sure to quickly cover any sensitive electrical parts with a plastic bag. The cleaning tools you'll use are from your wheel bucket. The lug nut brush, wheel wash mitt, and the wheel woolly can all be used during the engine cleaning process. Use three squirts of Brute wheel soap and fill the bucket about half to three quarters with water. Then 
quickly and lightly rinse the engine to remove the majority of the loose dirt. Be sure to wear protective gloves when working on your engine. Spray AP Cleaner, a citrus degreaser, on the heavily soiled areas and agitate with your lug nut brush. Before the area has time to dry, lightly rinse the now suspended dirt away. Afterwards, use compressed air or the master blaster to dry the engine along with an old microfiber towel. Finally, remember to remove the plastic protection. Then, close the hood, but not all the way. We will need to open it again later. Step 3. Remove the rubber floor mats and put them aside for now. Be sure to avoid spilling the dirt back into the carpet fibers as it will just cause more work for you later. Okay, so on to the next step. If you skip the engine cleaning part, that totally makes sense. Probably about 50% of you are gonna skip that uh, most of the time because you clean your engine, I don't know, every couple of months. Uh, this one was really bad. So if you skip that one, then this would be the first step when you're just coming up to your car, it's time to clean it. You're gonna work on the wheels first. We're gonna chat a little bit about a, uh, I guess you call it a little controversy on how to clean wheels or how to start cleaning wheels. Step number one, or uh, you know, controversy number one, is you rinse the wheels down with water, really heavy water, try to knock a lot of uh, dirt off, then you put your cleaner. And a lot of people say, hey, don't do that because it's only diluting the cleaner, okay? So now step, or uh, controversy two, or option two, let's call it, would be dry like it is right now. Take your cleaner, spray your cleaner in there, let it sit, and then take the water afterwards and rinse it down. So do you see the separation between the two? You're asking yourself, which one do you choose? Oh, well, I typically like to rinse the, the wheel down first for safety and knock a lot of the junk off. Then I put the cleaner on. My reason for that is anytime you use a cleaner that is powerful enough to take off junk without having to agitate it, meaning you just put it on there and the chemical eats everything away real quick and it, the wheel looks amazing, but you didn't have to really rub it or, you know, or agitate it. For me, that's a chemical that's too strong. I, am, I, I want to, to, to take my brushes and get in there and clean it out. I, I need the, the, the product to just loosen it and then I'll push it away. So that's my theory on it to each his own. Also, I wanted to make the point that if you have winter mats like these here, um, you should take them out right now because you're gonna, when you're done doing all four wheels, I also clean the, the, uh, the uh, little grooves of this thing with the, uh, the tools that I have in, for the wheels. And obviously not gonna use the same tools that you use on the paint that you're gonna use. Look how dirty, look how nasty this is. So uh, just keep that in mind. You wanna keep flowing and keep this wash as, uh, as efficient as possible. All right, so let's hop into the steps now. Cleaning wheels effectively is a very systematic approach beginning with a heavy initial rinse of the rim, wheel well, and rubber. Next, I apply Ammo Plum Wheel Cleaner based on the level of dirt present. Three squirts, five, or maybe even 10, depending on your condition. Immediately afterwards, start with a big wheel woolly at 12 o'clock so that the soap and dirt runs down the inner barrel to avoid double work. Then, follow up with the lug nut brush for those tight areas and a quick wipe of the rubber. Then use the wheel wash mitt to clean behind the rim spokes. Finally, use the wheel woolies to clean the inner wheel well, then rinse the wheel and move to the next one. When you finish all four wheels, doing one wheel at a time, then rinse and scrub the rubber floor mats and leave them in the shade to dry. You see, some rubber will have weird watermark stains if allowed to bake and dry in the sun, so do your best to avoid that. Okay, on to the next step. As you can see, the wheels look great, the tire is fantastic. We're gonna come back later and we're gonna touch the wheels up I, with a cloth, we'll talk about that later, and we're gonna put uh, mud tire gel on it and we'll play with the engine. We're gonna do all that later. So the next step now is just preparing for the wash. This bucket over here, has this crazy wash mitt. Again, you can find the link on the website. It's important, look, look down on the bottom of that. You see how it's nice and white? We'll show you that after the wash and we'll show you how effective these grit guards are. So I have two grit guards in there. This is gonna be my uh, empty uh, one with, no, with no, uh, nothing in it. It's just gonna be water for my rinse. This is ammo foam. You're gonna take three squirts, one on the uh, towel, on the mitt itself, one on the bottom, you can put one on the other side or you can put one inside the actual wash mitt as well. So that's kind of the little trick that I use there. No soap in here. And of course, 
you guys know the foam gun. Now, when you use the foam gun, you're going to fill it up about um, a third of the way, or uh, maybe a quarter of the way. Uh, and you're going to fill the bottom of it. Now, I've shot another video. I'll put a little link on it right here. When I did a Corvette here, when I talked about the foam gun, you can change how much uh, foam comes out. But I will warn you, you're going to use a lot more uh, material when you do use this. Again, this is another link on there. So I'm going to use this, and I'll show you how to use this again um, real quick. But uh, so let's fill these things up. So it's very important. Fill these up before. We notice we haven't rinsed the car down. No water has hit it. Why do you do that? Because if it's super sunny out, which it isn't right now, it's getting late in the day. Uh, if you rinse down the car and then you come around here and you start monkeying around with all these things and it takes you 20 minutes, the water on the car is going to dry and you're, you potentially could get water spots. So I'm going to show you why I don't get water spots anymore with a filter that I have over here. Okay, so here's one of my favorite things and my wife thinks I'm completely nuts because I rinse my car down, I wash it down with the most filtered, beautiful water ever and I love it. So when we talked about water spots back there, what's happening is the calcium and all the junk that comes out of the regular faucet here for the hose uh, has stuff in it and when it dries, it dries on your on your paint and can cause some problems I don't have that problem anymore because I have the spotless water system Unbelievable stuff as you can see here two massive canisters with filters in them that filter all the junk out before it goes all the way out to my car So super geeky, but I love it. No water spots ever with this uh, this tool here pretty cool For step six fill both the soap and clean water buckets first before pre-rinsing the paint top to bottom I also like to rinse the undercarriage for every wash as well, not just in the winter. Step seven, use a foam gun to pre-soak the paint to help loosen and carry away the dirt safely. If you feel your car is not that dirty or you have very hard paint, you may wanna skip this step. Step eight, dunk the wash mitt in the soap bucket and always start at the top and work your way lower but watch the next segment for the exact wash pattern to minimize scratching. Okay guys, I'm behind the camera. I stopped uh, in the middle of washing because I wanted to make a very important point. We all know that we should start with the top, right? I'm gonna use this side as an example. So we start with the top, that's number one. Go all the way back and forth. Then I do the glass, right? That's number two. I do the front here, three. You know, half the glass, whatever I can reach. Top here, four. Now between three and four, I'm rinsing, right? So not because I don't like the hood to get, the hood gets a little bit more dirty than normal. So rinse, rinse. So I rinse this one, right? Do it, and then now I have five. I do the fender, and this is a perfect example. So this is what I was thinking of. See this little line here? So I do everything above the line. So then I come back this way, do everything above the line. And then I'll go around the car and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm kind of really going top down, but I'm doing side to side layering. What you don't want to hit first, uh, is here. So essentially you want to hit this and that black piece the, at the very, very end. And I, I like to save the back for the end as well. There's usually lots of soot and junk from the exhaust or whatever. So that's sort of the pattern. Very quick recap. Roof, roof, window, glass, 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 redunk, clean. Do the nose here. Again, I didn't go down to the front bumper, right? I didn't do that yet. Uh, then I do this, dunk again, depending on how dirty it is. I do this, this, this pattern right here, this pattern right here, and then I repeat it on the other side. Now when you're done with all that stuff, all that's left is the bumper, you know, the back area here, the bumper, and this lower part, and the front part here. There's no other way that I could explain it except get behind the camera. So that's the steps that you would do in terms of washing. Make sense? And when the wash process is complete, rinse the soap away. Now that your car is wet from the rinse, Fold a clean, dry microfiber towel into fours. Then, soak the towel in fresh hose water. Afterwards, wring out the towel so it's damp but not wet, and spray three squirts of amohydrate lightly on the towel. Next, wipe the wet paint in straight lines to remove the water, and wring out the towel as it becomes full. This will add vital lubrication and protection during the drying phase. Adopting this process will change the way you think about drying your paint, and the immediate depth it creates is amazing. Now that the outside is dry, open up the doors to clean and dry the door jams with ammo spit spray wax. This is one of the most overlooked areas that can build up dirt quickly, so stay on top of it with every wash. And remember, use an old microfiber towel not suitable for the paint, as these areas will be extremely dirty.
Now, with all the doors open, step 11 is a quick vacuum. Okay, so we just dried the car with hydrate and it looks absolutely spectacular. Then we opened up all the doors, as you can see, and we spray wax the door jams and we clean them up because they get a little gunky. One thing to take note of, always hit the bottom of the door because if you miss the bottom of the door and then you go to close it again, all that water and gunk goes back onto the, um, the door jam as you get in the car. And every time you open it, you're like, oh man, I totally forgot that. Or didn't I just wipe that? But it's coming from down here, so big heads up on that. Now with all the doors open, see how I left them open? I like to air everything out. Uh, we're going to vacuum. Now this is like the what the Porsche of, uh, of vacuums. It is unbelievable. It's a little, a little expensive. Totally worth it. And the big reason, it's a Fest Tool clean tech, uh, and totally worth it because there's a, a bunch of different settings so I can have high and low settings and there's actually an outlet out here. But the big thing for me is our dust extraction. I'm willing to pay anything for dust extraction. If you do this long enough, especially if you're a pro, you're going to get a lot of dust and a lot of gunk and a lot of garbage in the air. And I was sneezing a lot and, you know, runny nose and that whole thing. And this cut it out because there's a massive filter in it or whatever. But it's super thin. I like this little hose, but it's, it's got a lot of suction. So uh, there's tons of videos of me playing with this thing. So moving on to the vacuum, I'm going to pull the camera in and show you the steps. It's very simple, but it'll save you a bunch of time. All right, onto the steps of vacuuming, which, by the way, is kind of my favorite part of the car wash. I don't know about you guys, but I love vacuuming things out. Anyways, um, let me tell you a little, uh, little story, a little trick here. When you get a new customer, um, for those guys who are professionals watching this, when you get a new customer, make sure, uh, I, I, sometimes I do a little bit of a trick, um, depending on if I can read their body language and see how fastidious they are, how finicky they are. I'll get in the car, like this one's very small, so like let's say a small person like my wife was in here, I'd want to return the seat somewhere close to their length. Now if somebody was came in in a Suburban and he was 6'8", I wouldn't want to put the seat like this. It kind of ruins, like he opens the door, he's like, oh my gosh, my car is so clean and wonderful and vacuumed out. And he, get, he tries to get in the car, he's like, oh, and he's got to sit here and play with it. Just be conscious of that, that you don't want to... Uh, you know, totally mismatch that. So sometimes I sit and I look in the mirror and I touch the steering wheel and I just make sure I go, okay, this guy's really tall or this lady's really short or whatever. So think about that. Anyways, when you're doing your own car in the driveway, put the seat back all the way and put the seat back. Lean that like as if you were gonna to go to sleep because you wanna open up some of those crevices. Uh, after that, you're gonna take uh, your vacuum and you're gonna go underneath the seat you're gonna work your way from the center console this direction. At least that's the way that I do it. Uh, and you get your crevice tool, you know, you pretend this is the crevice tool. I can't turn this on, obviously, because we won't be able to talk. Take your crevice tool, get all the way in the back, and you can uh, get next to the, uh, the rails as much as possible. You don't wanna wipe those rails clean either, because there's grease in there, so be careful. Um, get all the way through from here, and then work your way uh, clockwise around the, uh, the, the area here. And before, a few, a few seconds ago, I, I took the mat out as well. Put it on the ground, we'll do that later. Make sure you don't throw it into a puddle. The last thing is you are going to pull, and I'll bring the camera in, you're gonna pull the seams open and vacuum out. Now we shot a couple of videos on that. That'll get lots and lots of gunk that you didn't realize was in between the seat folds. So the seat folds like this, you're gonna pull it open and then vacuum in between. When you're done with that, pull the seat all the way forward, put the headrest, the, the back all the way this way towards the steering wheel, do the floor, then do the back seat, then do the trunk, do the back seat, do the floor, do this, you know, so you're gonna go in this sort of pattern. Just keeps, it keeps your mind, you can put your headphones on and not like, oh, what's the next step? You, once you get that routine down, it's kind of fun. So yeah, let's do that vacuum and then we'll talk about a quick wipe down. And uh, yeah, we'll wrap up. For step 12, add a few squirts of ammo lather to a clean, dry microfiber towel and lightly remove any standing dust. If you happen to find a new stain in the fabric, use Ammo Shag Fabric Cleaner and my scrub pad to remove the dried material. First, soak the area with 5 to 10 squirts, then scrub the fabric heavily and dry with a microfiber towel. Remember, time is of the essence with interior stains, so stay on top of them quickly with every wash. All right, so we cleaned up the interior. Now we're moving on to the next step. Hang in there, guys. We're almost home. We're, uh, we're rounding third right now. Next thing you want to do is the glass, and there's a particular reason why we do it in this order. Now, the next thing that we do, I'll give you a bit of a preview, is we're going to work on the wheels again and put tire shine on the wheels, and we're going to put a little bit of tire shine on the engine compartment too. That's an option. But 
The reason why we do glass first is if we did it after the tire shine, obviously we'd have that residue on our hands and we'd be touching the glass, not a good idea. You'd be smearing things around. So we do glass first. Take a little bit of invisible glass. I like to start with the driver's side because my towels are the cleanest then and, and maybe psychologically I think, you know, you want the driver's side window to be the cleanest of all the glass, right? So you, a few squirts, nothing, nothing too crazy. Take my glass cleaning towel. Now I have a bunch of videos you guys can go and watch where we just talk about glass cleaning ad nauseum. Tons and tons of things to talk about, but uh, low microfiber. You're gonna do a quick, say I did north, south, north, south, east, west, east, west, really quickly. And then you take your microfiber towel, which is dry. And then I just lightly, kind of like buffing it. And I, this is the one time you're allowed to do circles. What that's doing is picking up any of the last little residue. That last little residue is what causes the streak. So if you pick it up real quick, you got no streaks. Go all the way around the glass, and then when you're done, make sure your towels are clean, and you can work the interior of the glass as well. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so now you've done all the glass inside and outside except the windshield. Kind of an annoying thing to do, right? You would normally come from this side, you would think, come from the driver's side, but the steering wheel is in the way. So everyone has to come from this direction. When you do, you put the towel on your hand like this, and then you flip your hand around. That's the safest way to do it. And your left hand goes down here and your knee goes over here. So you see how I can reach everything? But most people think, hey, I'm just gonna spray right here. Now I have a ton of videos. You, got, you gotta watch the video. It's a really, really long video on how to do this. If I were to spray right now, all the mist would go on the dashboard. And sometimes dashboards get really, really hot if the sun was hitting it and it would uh, evaporate very quickly and sometimes it causes dots. I, I can't tell you which one will and which one won't, but the safest thing to do is just not do it at all. So take a little bit. You know, you don't want to make this too wet, so it's kind of a fine line. Put it on your hand, this, and then you get in there. And the same thing, you go north, south, north, south. Do one side at a time, east, west, and you want to push a little bit. You can feel when it catches. When it catches, that means there's, there's gunk on the glass. So you really want to rotate these a lot. Then get in there quickly with the microfiber towel and you shouldn't have any streaks. Again, pop out of the car and look inside, get inside the car, you know, that kind of thing. You're gonna have to check. Believe me, you are never gonna get the glass right on the first try. I don't think I've ever done it in 15 years of, of cleaning glass. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Just keep at it and you'll get it. After the glass is done, take an old microfiber towel and double check your rims in case you miss a spot. And trust me, I always miss a spot. So spend 20 to 30 seconds now to avoid wiping the rim with your finger while you're refueling at the gas station. As you can tell, I have a lot of experience with this. <laughs> Next, add a few drops of ammo mud tire dressing to the rubber and massage it in. Be sure to go in multiple directions when applying it and allow at least five minutes to dry. For special events, I'll add tire dressing the night before in my garage to allow maximum penetration and dry time. Then I add a light, fresh layer once I arrive at the show. The last step is step 15, and that is to add ammo mud to the engine plastics and exterior trim if a light sheen is important to you. Afterwards, lightly wipe the area to regulate the level of shine. You see, I prefer my dressings to be medium shine. The bling bling look is not for me. Well guys, we're all set. That's the chronological steps and some of the tools that I use when I do a basic Sunday wash, let's call it that. I didn't detail, I didn't compound, I didn't polish, I didn't wax, I didn't do any, I didn't clay, I didn't do any of those things. You can add them in when appropriate, but I wanted to go over the steps and the tools specifically. Now, uh, the car looks pretty good, but I wanted to show you something and leave you with something. Here are my two buckets, right? This was the bucket that we used to wash. Uh, and FYI, when you use these, uh, these uh, mitts, make sure you rinse them out and, and, and don't leave them in the water, otherwise they get, uh, they, they disintegrate a little bit faster than they should. So be heads up on that. This was my rinse water. Now my wife's gonna kill me, this is a clean glass. You guys didn't see this. Now look at that murky, nasty, if you can see, I'll, I'll bring the camera up close. There's little bits of gunk and whatnot in there. So I'll put that to the side and show you on camera. And then on here, I'm going to pour this out and I'll bring the camera in and show you how much gunk is on the bottom and how useful these grit guards are. So all that stuff came off this car and if I point the camera in here, you'll see how, how much stuff came off. So hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed this and learned a few things. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, shoot me an email at larry at ammonyc.com. Basically everything that you've seen here is on my new website, which I'm pretty stoked about. So there's links and all that sort of stuff. So as always, uh, I appreciate it very much and I'll see you guys soon.